recorded live from Studio 12A in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and Friends Podcast. Hello! Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends Podcast. I am your host. My name is Josh. And this week, I'm welcoming back a familiar old friend to the show. In our first episode together, we discussed everything from our old football days back in junior high and high school, our mutual love for rock and roll, and our epic drives to absolutely nowhere. So in this episode, I thought we'd pick up right where we left off from last time and maybe discuss some up-and-coming projects that we have in the works. So please help me welcome back to the show the president of the Brock Heward Fan Club, which I didn't even know was a thing, and my old pal, the one and only Mr. Ethan McDonald. Ethan, welcome back. How you doing, buddy? I am excellent, Josh Matlock. Excellent. <laughs> awesome, dude. It's so good to talk to you. I haven't spoken with you in ages. But it feels like, I don't know if that's true anymore, but yeah. No. It's yeah. good to be back, brother. Yes. It's good to be back. Yes. So you just got back from vacation. Uh, how was that? Ah, it was nice. Yeah. The lovely, uh, beautiful central Oregon city of Bend. Lots nice. of hiking, lots of natural beauty. Awesome. So enjoyed that with the family. And uh, yeah, it's good to be home for a week before I take off to go see old Lee Olson. Oh. Bruce Naslow, the legend. So jealous. So jealous. Yeah. Uh, so did you, and you got to see the video store, correct? Yes. We went to Blockbuster, <laughs> the last standing Blockbuster on earth. And you uh, said your son was kind of like, oh, okay, this is it, huh? This is yeah, the famous like, video. <laughs> How pathetic it must have been to live when you guys lived. And I like guess he was pretty much underwhelmed by it. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It is funny too, because now you just click onto something and it's there and immediately ready to watch before it was like a process. And wow. And you had to like wow. pay money. Like, you know, what were some, some of the times the releases were like four ninety nine or something like that. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that was like the one thing the Blockbuster kind of had, at least, unlike, you know, a lot of other local mom and pop shops, as you recall, Josh, was that when Blockbuster finally came into Auburn, uh, you were at least had a better chance. You still were probably <laughs> screwed for the new releases, but you had a better chance because they had like, I don't know, 75 freaking copies. Right. Compared to the little mom and pop place that what was that one that was kind of over there by where uh, the Auburn Starbucks. Valley Video. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was like the. I remember. That was like the intermediate, like, uh, yes. you know, because there weren't, there, I loved, my favorite were the mom and pop, you know, video stores. Absolutely. And then, you know, the, then the bigger ones started coming in and then Blockbuster kind of like just took over everything. But that was the thing where the prices got jacked up, like you said, and that was yeah. the only reason maybe you went to one of those because, you know, you're paying so much more, but <laughs> maybe they have the outside shot of like having a new release and you wouldn't have to wait a month before it was finally in it, like the mom and pop place. Right, right. And yeah. then the Auburn Valley video, they had that one little section where, you know, you kind of look both ways and... Uh, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Yeah, that was the the spank bank section. So hilarious. Right. Guy in a trench coat, and like sitting there looking at, uh, I was like, don't make eye contact with this guy. Do not the creepiest make thing. Contact. Yeah. <laughs> the creepiest thing. Oh, man. Well, I remember like Brent and I, back when I was living up in Black Diamond, we used to like, I would never let a kid do this now. Like we'd walk along Auburn Black Diamond where there are no shoulders or sidewalks oh, on goodness. the road. Like it's like just waiting to die. Yeah. But we'd walk a good mile and a half up to the little Brookside Market, and there was a little video store there. I was trying to tell Riker, like, you would rent so many horrible movies just because you would just look at the covers. Yep. And that was the thing I was trying to explain to him at Blockbuster. Like, you look at the box and go, well, this looks cool. And how often the cover looked cool and the movie was crap, oh. especially in the late 80s and 90s, was often. Oh, was it was 90% of the time. I mean, because, like, they would put all their budget into, like, you know, the, the awesome cover. And you're like, oh, my yeah. God, this looks so awesome. And, yeah, and no, you're right. That is that is 100% true because, you know, when you are looking at those covers, that's all pretty much you can go by because it's not like you could go onto YouTube and just watch a trailer. There's no such thing as trailer. I mean, you, no. you could watch trailer. Remember they started putting trailers like at the beginning of movies when you rented them later? And like <laughs> you'd have to go to a theater to see the, the trailer and you weren't seeing trailers for, you know, you know, the Killer Tomatoes part six or whatever, you know? <laughs> no. So 
Yeah. Well, that was the best part. Sometimes the trailers were better than the actual video that you rented. That was the crazy thing. It's like, Absolutely. well, the trailers, I want to see that. And then the video was, the movie itself was terrible. You say that about a lot of movies, a lot, yeah. a lot of good movies, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you're, so you are actually on summer break right now. I am. How is the life of a teacher? Oh, it's so great. So, like that must be, you know, aside from, you know, helping the children and, you know, you know whatever. <laughs> that must be the best part of being a teacher, especially, uh, you know, because a lot of teachers are married to teachers, which makes complete sense because then you have the summers off together and you could travel. And, Absolutely. Yeah. So that that must be amazing, man. Like, and like you said, you get to go visit, you know, the, the famous Lee Olson. Well, yeah. And this, like you're saying, you know, like for Sarah and I to have constantly had this time with Riker each year. And that's why this summer yeah. in particular, we kind of, we loaded our summer with a lot of vacation a because last year we could do nothing because of COVID, of course. Yeah. Uh, but then B just because uh, this is the summer going into Riker's senior year, man. And so like, Lord knows yeah. if we'll ever see him again after he moves for college. I mean, <laughs> do you, does he know where he's going to college yet? Uh, he's looking at Oregon state primarily for some mechanical engineering, but I think he's got his uh, mind open to some other schools as he's kind of doing his due diligence and kind of figuring out what he wants to do there. But uh, the engineering yeah. seems to be the focus that he's really into. So then it's trying to figure out what school who, fits that best. Who gave him the brains? Uh, I think it's a, <laughs> it's definitely a Lynn family thing. Cause you know me, Josh, I was not necessarily the most stellar of students uh, back in our mechanical time. Mechanical engineering. I don't, can, yeah. can you, can you get him on the phone? Cause I don't I even know what that is. <laughs> Riker, do you want to come and tell uh, Josh what uh, mechanical engineering is? Uh, oh, he's, he's there. <laughs> he's sitting right behind me. Yeah. He'd be happy to put on the headset and give you an explanation, but, uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got, we've got a, uh, you know, some of my nephews and stuff that are uh, a little older than Riker that have gone into a variety of different things. But one of the ones closest to him in age is a, a nephew Anders and he's mechanical engineering going through Washington state, tri cities and working on like internships for Hanford and making wow. money and in internships. Like, I remember internships, like you know, student teaching wasn't really an internship, but Josh, I'm sure you had internships and I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure they paid not a cent, no. not a freaking cent. Like we were bleeding money, continuing to pay for college, doing this yeah. internship, but getting the skills. And here's my nephew and he's pulling down like $35 an hour at this internship at Hanford or something ridiculous like that. And I'm like, screw you, engineer guy. Oh, so man. More money than That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, at the rock yeah. station when I, and I just interned uh, at Cornerstone Communications, which was a, which was a video production plant uh, during the week. And then on Fridays, I got to go to KISW and I say, got to, because it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> but I had to pay uh, like $15 a day to park there because I had to oh, walk, geez. I had to park down the street because it was, there's there nowhere to park in you can't park in the building because every, everyone that works there is parked in the building. So, so yeah, I, I literally had to pay to, to, to go, to go uh, you know, at the, uh, the radio station there. So, yeah, now, yeah, the, you know, the reason summer for me is great is that I get to see all the places that you visit and live my life vicariously through you and your family. Yeah, so, I post a lot on the social no, media. No, you do, there. you do. I, you know what though? Some people might think that that is annoying. I am the opposite. I think that is awesome because again, I said this before on our first uh, episode or whatever, that I literally got to see you and your wife and your child, who's not a child anymore, but I got to see Riker literally grow up, you know, from a, from a baby you know, into this, you know, I mean, high schooler, <laughs> it's yeah. wild. So like, I, th that's something that, you know, Hey, bag on social media, all you want, which is there are a lot of things wrong with social media these days, but there are. that's not one of them. And I guess, you know, Instagram could be, uh, you know, different now. I mean, you could just do Instagram and post pictures and it would be the same kind of deal, but, but yeah, well, I think that's it. I think it's like the Instagram to me has always been more interesting too, because I've always been more appealing to, I guess like the visual aspect of social media has always been more ah. appealing of the photos, the pictures, seeing my friends, seeing what they're up to in life. And like, you know, like I said, there's a handful of people that I love staying in touch with on social media. And to be honest, right. we post so much more selfishly for us. It's almost like this online photo album. And I've probably wear people out. They probably get really sick of seeing my wife. In fact, I think my wife's concerned because so many people think that like she chooses all those pictures and posts them <laughs> herself because of the shared social media account. Yeah. Like 
somehow she's stuck on herself. And it's the funniest thing because, yes, I'm very blessed. My wife is an uh, incredibly attractive woman, but she's about the most humble human being I've ever met. And in fact, she's probably super uncomfortable that I post as much things that I do. But. Oh, I, I, I could tell. I, I, it's so funny because there are some pictures where I, I can tell that she's like, you know, just enjoying the view or something like that. And you're like, hey, Sarah. And she turns around, and you're like, oh, great. Really? You're like, yeah, taking exactly. a back. <laughs> Again, really? About it's so awesome. Like, nah. So great. No. So, Ethan, what I wanted to do during this episode is I kind of wanted to pick off where we left off from your first show, which was quite some time ago, by the way, but, uh, but which was right around the time we were going to college. So I think it's, you know, like, we're kind of like going to 1996, 1995, 1996-ish. So, yeah. so after high school, you went to Highline Community College up in Des Moines. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I couldn't join you and Lee at the Harvard on the Hill known as Green River. I had to go to the other Harvard on the other hill. Why is that? Uh, I don't even know why I went to Highline Community College. Uh, I think just because in my mind, I just didn't want to go to Green River. It was just too close. And yeah. if you remember, I was working at... Um, well, first incredible universe for a little bit, but then I started getting a job at athletic supply. And so it was actually pretty close from athletic supply oh, yeah. coming down the hill. Right. And yeah. so, yeah, I don't, I just, I can't exactly tell you why. Just no, just it trying to sense. get away from as many Auburn yeah. people as possible. No, cause it really was like, you know, it, it, well, Green River's in Auburn. So you just right up the hill. It, one thing that Green River is better than, you know, they're both community colleges. So it really doesn't matter. You're just going to get a certificate and go wherever or do whatever. Um, but the thing that, I always loved about Green River is how it's like in the in a forest. <laughs> it's like really yeah. cool looking, but um, kind of like a almost kind of like a hippie commune school, <laughs> or at least what it, it looked like, like a day camp. Yeah, <laughs> it did. It felt like a day so camp like or retreat. something weird out there. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. So um, now at that same time, you were coaching at hi at the high school, right? Yes, that was kind of the weird. Uh... <laughs> I guess I didn't really ever think about life after high school. I was one of those just knuckleheaded young men. And, uh, you know, I mean, I probably could have, if I would have pulled my head out of my ass and paid attention to teachers. And I mean, I had some people that were interested to have me maybe go and play football in college, but mm -hmm. when you take algebra one, two times in three years with Mr. Moss and, uh, <laughs> then get <laughs> kicked Moss. out of your geometry class, your yeah. senior year. Uh, and I was okay with that because I yeah. thought, Oh, cool. I'll just go TA for Bob. Yeah. For Bob Jones. <laughs> so yeah. And then when the colleges would say, wait a minute, you never got further than algebra one. Do you realize you're not even like eligible to the NCAA clearinghouse? Cause you haven't like, you've got no one. Way. Math for real? That was like, that was for real. Like I had no clue. And so all these people were pushing like, we need to get you to do here in summer school. And it just was overwhelming. And, and then, you know, as we've talked before, my family life was kind of a mess. And I'll be honest, I think I was absolutely just scared to death of leaving home yeah. and just not sure what to do there. And because uh, my friends were probably my family anyway, yeah. to be honest, my family drove me so much nuts. So I just at that point, I just wasn't ready. And so through self-sabotage self and other things, screwed up any of those opportunities. Um, and so decided I was just going to work. And then uh, I was going to try coaching. And I, you know, Bob, I think was frustrated just because I think he's heard that from a bunch of kids yeah. over the years. Uh, and a lot of them didn't show up consistently really were more of a, you know, like a, a concern than they were an actual help, more of a hindrance, I guess. Uh, Cause you know, even in those five years I worked at Auburn with Bob, I mean, I saw some of those kids come back and they just, yeah, they didn't, they didn't show up very consistently. They ran their mouth. They said things and don't get me wrong. I did all those things that first year too, but I guess I showed up enough and it, you know, Bob was always looking out for me. So he decided right. after that first year where I volunteered that he would hire me and pay me as an actual assistant coach because that next year was the first year that Auburn went to being a four-year high school and they needed freshman coaches. Wow. And so he says, listen, you're going to be paid, but I'll be honest, Ethan, I'm going to check. You're going to show me regular statements. If you don't put every cent I pay you towards college, uh, I will fire you on the spot. Do you understand me? That's and wild, I'm like, man. I'm like, yes, sir. That's cool. <laughs> so, that guy really was like a true father figure man like and not to uh, clearly to you but to so many people it, so many it's more, crazy yeah. and and yeah. I, I always talk i always bring him up man like people you know they just when you think of coaches you just think of the oh the he's the football coach oh okay you know no but he was uh he was the real deal man he was a life coach he was the a man coach i mean he just 
I honest to God, hand on heart, I would not be where I'm at today. I wouldn't have my lovely wife, my family. I wouldn't be a high functioning human being if Bob did not directly intervene. And not to say nothing yeah. about some of the guys I grew up with. I mean, a lot of them ended up fine, have great families. I'm proud of them too, you yeah, know? And sure. But it's, uh, I just think I had a lot more self-destructive tendencies than some of those guys <laughs> could have done something just <laughs> super dumb. We still have some of those friends that didn't quite make it out, you know? you know, without it's like, a lot it's of like Vietnam. You know, Perry, some of some know, didn't, never made it out. Well, you know, just the broken families yeah. and messed up. Some of us had it way worse, but yeah. I'm uh, right. just super thankful for Bob. Cause I mean, you know, some of you guys had great stable families and, and we're fine. And you guys got to school, went to college and did all the right things. And it just took me about four more years to figure all that stuff out and pull my head out of my ass. So, <laughs> well, so, so let's, okay. So that leads me into uh, central Washington. So, so now Bob actually knew, a coach over there or something or right or how did, well, how did that story go yeah it's kind of that because honestly we had been going to western washington because bob was an old western washington viking we've been up there okay. for a bunch of years for football camp mm -hmm. they recruited uh like myself and donnie sims and bj like right out of high school and we were all kind of considering it at the time but uh so I, we had way more ties to Western and I mm -hmm. thought Western was actually pretty appealing too. Cause Bellingham was, you know, pretty close to all my Canadian family and relatives. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, Oh man, that could work out pretty well. And Bob was like, I think you should do it, Ethan. I think you should. And then uh, it was my buddy, Mo, because mm -hmm. Mo who played for Eastern Washington back in the day, uh, his linebacker coach when he's playing was John Zamberlin, who was now the head coach at central. Wow. And then when you got up to Central and John, I think John started at Central. Right he started he there, Washington but he, I think he he left uh, pretty quick. I think he left right after the first uh, quarter started. I think he transferred over to Wazoo. Well, and there was a couple of times. So I came up to visit you, so I felt comfortable about that. There's yeah. a time that you and I uh, went and picked up, and uh, gosh, I can't even remember. I've been hitting the head so many times, Josh. Sometimes the details <laughs> escape me. But I remember a lot of the great times when we went and picked up uh, – Drew, Melissa, and yeah. uh, <laughs> right, right, and went to the the Hall and Oates and Chicago concert oh, yeah. at the Gord. <laughs> but that was before I was at school yeah. at Central. But then getting to know them, like I just felt like, oh my gosh, I know right. some people here thanks to you, the yep. connections you had made. And, and Lee and was pretty Lee, much always out there yeah. too. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it just that made that sealed the deal. When you came then, out to visit me, I remember that I really, really remember this one day when you came out i think it, i don't know if it was just for the afternoon or for his like for the night um but i was it with brent and frank or something or i don't know it could be that sounds right right <laughs> <laughs> anyway it was it was such a blast because i was able to take you kind of like on a tour of the campus you know because i'm yeah. mr you know i've been here for you know, a couple months now. Uh, so, so, but I, I, uh, I think I had my little dorm food card where I was able to scan you guys in for like lunch and everything. And we went to the, I think it was like called the, the little village market or something. I'm pretty positive. Village market. Maybe it wasn't Depot Deli. Depot, Depot Deli. Deli that's Josh. what it is. Yes. yes. The Depot Deli, Josh, it was money. Yep. The Depot Deli. So, and you know what happened uh, at the Depot Deli? Do you remember what happened there? Oh, no. I'm sure I did something. So, no, you did not do anything. Okay, good, good, good. No. So, that was that was the first time you ever got to see Sarah. Oh, yeah. Angel Face or something you called her. I yep. can't remember. You had I, some name for it. Yes. I did not call her Sarah back in the day because I didn't even know her real name. And with our circle of friends, she was just simply known as Angel Face. So... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was funny because I, I found out by other people at the radio station and just talking to other people that I met that our dorm, which is Al Monte was yeah. known around campus as the hot girl dorm. And it really was. <laughs> you did. Well, I just remember, yes, Sarah obviously caught yeah. my, to me, she was like the most stunningly beautiful girl I'd saw. And not to say yep. that now, cause I'm married no. to her. Like I almost got in car accidents gawking at her like some sort of damn creeper not paying attention where i was driving about rear-ended lee who was in front of me <laughs> at a different point in college but that's awesome uh, i remember you had that tall swimmer girl that was really strikingly oh, pretty yeah. too i don't remember leanne or something or i can't remember what her name yeah. something like, that might be wrong right right uh, she had a friend heather this, and yeah and yes and heather was one of yep. sarah's old roommates oh that's funny so that's she funny. knew heather and like yeah it was crazy that's funny man yeah there was just 
look, it, it had no shortage of attractive young women at that place. So, so well, when I was like, sealed the deal too, buddy. I think that might be part of the reason I went to Central. You did a great job. What do you think? Should I be up. a recruiter? Should I be? You should have been because that was uh, highly effective. Let's just say that. Oh man, that was so funny, man. Like, yeah, yeah, you were like, boy, uh, this is uh, looking like a good place to uh, to be. Yeah, and it was all sunny, and you know. It, Central is one of those places too, where it's like it's over the mountains. So it's like in, so right when a lot of people don't realize that Washington is mostly uh, desert. You know, it's like yeah. you have that, you have that. You know, third of the side which is the Seattle area and and all that good stuff over the Cascades. Uh, but then when you cross the mountains, it's kind of like flat, kind of desert. You know, so it, it'll snow, but then it'll snow and then it'll, the sun will be out. <laughs> It's like yeah. sunny all the time over there. And that you're kind of like in that area in Oregon too, right? Yes, we are. It's yeah. a, that beautiful rain shadow effect you get yeah. from those mountain ranges, that cascade just ringing out of that water. But yeah. Right. And so we're on the desert side of the state. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, you coming over uh, to visit me uh, at Central uh, probably had a lot to, uh, to do with you uh, at going there, which is, uh, which is awesome. And, you know, without, uh, and, and without meeting Sarah, uh, there would be no Riker. So, uh, no, so, yeah. oh, I mean, just the best decision I made in my life for so many reasons. I mean, you could start with just the school. I actually finished, which is huge. Right. And yeah. got my degree and got my opportunity to, you know, to go and, and, and pursue my career and stuff like that. But then secondarily, you know, obviously meeting the love of my life. And then, you know, the, the crazy thing too, of like her first boyfriend the, was on my football team. We were good friends. Like I really liked Mark. Mark Acker was a so, fantastic guy. Yeah, what so happened I, with that? Like, what did oh, they just? Oh. We'll get there. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but then, thirdly, the fact that I did get that chance to play football, and then knowing that I wanted to coach after having those five years of of working with Bob as yeah. a coach uh, before I transferred, being the oldest man on campus by a long shot, and then walking on <laughs> and getting a chance to to chase that football dream at a place yeah. where. I mean, you saw it, Josh. I mean, mm -hmm. people probably don't realize, but the football at Central Washington was pretty damn good. I mean, it was obviously had those NAI years where they tied for the national championship, which has still got to be one of the more embarrassing things in all of history that we used to allow people to tie in a weird. national championship game. That is weird. Uh, but just like really good quality football and that that Northwest used to have that just that amazing league back in the day when it was all NAI with all the private schools, you know, like PLU and uh, and and Linfield, along with the you know Central Washington, Western Washington, Western Oregon stuff. That I mean that was legit. Yeah, like, hey, John Kitna. Football. John Kitna went there. He had, yeah, uh, had some alum. Yeah, they had some tough. Yeah, there's some guys in that you know within that conference too that had long NFL careers. Like Kevin Boss that played tight end for the Giants was a Western Oregon guy. I mean. Uh, I got the even still receiver for the Raiders, Western. I mean, so there's been some talent, but it was just so fun to get the to go there, walk on, play, meet some amazing coaches that helped shape my life, some amazing friends and players, and then uh, get to play offense and defense. Man, couldn't have set me up better to be a coach. And I thought I was going to go out of there and be a high school head coach and all these things. And uh, now I'm like, on, I don't know how many years of middle school football. <laughs> wow, <laughs> oh, craziness, but. Yeah, you know, still. What's Life weird team. is uh, you, you actually, you know, the football team was like really good, but there, the stadium was kind of like a non-existent stadium. Yeah. <laughs> the Auburn High School was twice as big as that stadium. It really was. Yeah. I mean, it was. <laughs> it's weird. It's like, well, we're in college. It's kind of weird. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah. So uh, now you actually, uh, when you came to visit, I think it was that first time mm -hmm. uh, when you came to visit and I was still in the dorms. And you actually recorded this famous voicemail for me in the dorm room. Do you remember what it said? No. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, oh, dear Lord. Good thing there's no FCC here because uh, you, because uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> I can only imagine knowing. Oh God, God. Even I used to that have, period of my life. I used to have relatives like distant like i used to have like my aunts and uncles calling and stuff and uh they'd be you're, there'd be like this long pause and they'd be like uh if this is josh's email hey uh josh we're just calling to say hi you're like so anyway the the voicemail it said and i quote this is how it went it went beep i like pussy cats, cats. i totally remember that now <laughs> I like pussy cats. 
So, uh, so yeah, with a long pause right in the middle. And I, I left that, I think I left that for the remainder of the time I was at the dorms. So I, that was my <laughs> smell that I kept uh. on there. And, uh, man, I wish I could have that. I wish I could find that, you know, not that it, you know, it's like, I mean, you could probably recreate it right now to be exactly the same, but it was, it was just funny that, uh, that was the uh, time capsule. Yes, exactly. And yeah. Yeah, so I, I remember my Uncle Tim. I think my Uncle Tim called, and, and, <laughs> and he's, he's like one of the ones that left that. He's like, uh, yeah, um, is this Josh? Hey, uh, if this is Josh, give me, give me a call. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Was Tim the interesting one? What's you that? Got, sometimes you got like, got your mom all pissed off. Was that Uncle Tim sometimes? And I just remember one no, time you had an uncle no, that, that was, was in Auburn. That was Uncle Tom. Tom, yeah. okay. Uncle Tom. They all start with T, so it's easy to, yeah. you know, miss <laughs> Yeah, Tom, and Tom just uh, actually recently passed away. So, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, I mean, like, yeah, he's been battling, uh, I think he was battling, um, you know, head, I think it was cancer. I think it was brain cancer for, you know, 10 years or something like that. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I think it was one of those things where Brutal. he knew it eventually was going to go, but obviously it's kind of weird when, you know, it actually happens. So, but yeah. Um. Uh, so, anyway... Uh, yeah. you actually, so anyway, you actually ended up uh, playing football at central and then you, that's where you met the famous Rob. Oh yes. Robbie Williams. Good old, not the, not the singer from England. No, no, no. Yeah. But to the, clarify. But the, <laughs> but the hilarious, uh, Robbie Williams from Tacoma. And did yes, he, the one did of a kind from, character. Good from, did he go, did he, was he from Wilson or where, where did he, yeah. he was Wilson, right? Wilson okay. high school. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Now, you know, Hey, look, we, I might want to leave some of the Rob stories uh, with, you know, you and Lee or, you know, you and Rob, you know, uh, because, you know, that, that, that having you talk about, you know, somebody else, uh, you know, with them on the phone is just, you know, it just would be probably better. Um, yeah. But, um, but one of my favorite things about Central uh, was the sports facility. And do you, do you remember the uh, the famous uh, sports facility where they had that oh. they had that little caged in weight room? Yeah, and, it was pathetic. And I, <laughs> I would go in there like every day and lift. And uh, and a few times there would be this uh, this guy on your team. I don't know. I don't know if he actually started or played. But do you remember this guy? He was uh, Bo- he looked like Boz. He had his Boz haircut and he was like total meathead. I don't know. He, you introduced me to him when I came there. I think that was before. Like, he, I don't know that he was still on the team by the time I got there and played. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you introduced me to him in the dorms, and you guys called him Boz or whatever. And he was like, he was one of a kind, man. I'm like, my God, I think I've had bowel movements with more IQ than this guy. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He thought he was like, he thought he was the shit, but um, but yeah, no, I, I think he literally thought he was Boz, <laughs> but without you know the the football talent. Um, no, but but that uh, training facility, that sports facility, wasn't that? I, this was the word that I heard, like that there were three of those structures that yeah. were built across the country, and two of them had collapsed, except for yeah. ours. Ours was the yeah, Nicholson one. Pavilion stands to this day. <laughs> I'd go in there and be like, "What would I do? What would I hide under if I, uh, if, if this thing was to collapse?" Uh, and I would always do that. I'd be like, okay, uh, I'm, let's go in here because this is a, you know, free weight room to go lift in. And, uh, you know, I, oh, God, this, is that thing still standing? Do you know? Yeah, the pavilion's still there. What's crazy, Josh? Like I'm telling you, the next time you get to the Northwest, man, you got to just go back up to Central because it's incredible how much that campus has transformed. Like, they got all the cool crap after we left, brother. Yeah. Like a brand new student union building is beautiful, but literally the outside facade of that building is immaculate it's the same and you're like it's still standing amazing wow. inside they gutted and remodeled everything like there's a whole varsity weight room for just the athletes that's incredible because now all of the fitness stuff for the students is in the new student union building so they redid the entire like arena piece the floor is incredible in there i mean the, the gym something amazing it still kind of looks like something out of hoosiers but with like a modern twist <laughs> yeah. you know it's just like yeah i mean it's Wow. It's, the facilities got so substantially better. I'm sure you maybe you've even just seen online, like what the stadium looks like now. They took the track out of there and made it just a football only, uh, and maybe rugby, because if you recall, we had a really good kind of like mm-hmm. uh, tradition of college rugby. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a first class facility. They put in a whole new track. Like you wouldn't even recognize it. It looks so much nicer wow. and so much more substantial. For, I did go like, to the radio the station. I went to the radio station and I saw that. And that's nicer than a lot of uh, actual 
radio stations in Seattle that I worked for. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, funny. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so that that place is, but yeah, that that uh, so I can't believe that 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 uh, sports facility is still there. I in it, by the way, in one of the windiest places in the country. By the way, it stands. <laughs> Maybe they just got it right there. They just got lucky there, those engineers. I wonder if it was like the first one they built and then like they kind of like slacked off and the next one. Like, you know what? We got this. We got this. We'll got have corners, Joe. Yeah. We'll have Joe uh, take the lead on this one. And he can, uh, you know, he, he, he watched us, you know, well enough during the construction of these, uh, this, this first one. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no. Uh, another thing that uh, you were known for back in the day uh, were tattoos. Now you designed yeah. you designed some tattoos, right? I I designed some tattoos, which so I'm you, pretty sure every one of my artist. friends that got one of them is probably going, "Why the hell did I do that?" Well, because <laughs> I'm a, I'm a cartoonist and I'm a, like a decent artist. But if you recall, Josh, most of my my artwork just got me in a lot of trouble in high school. <laughs> it was I don't like, know if you recall Iron when Maiden I did the STD <laughs> family and I drove our teachers the various STDs uh, <laughs> that got me in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Why does he explain this? Wait. Oh, I, so there was a bunch of teachers that were just kind of driving me up the wall. And like we've established, I was kind of a feral child through most of middle school and high school. <laughs> feral child. And I thought it'd be funny because if you recall, I could cartoon a little. Yeah. So yeah, I you took were a number. Yeah, I took a number of our teachers and drew the most colorful and uh, kind of virulent sexually transmitted diseases all over their bodies. And put it into a little collection and stapled it together. And I had Brian Peterson. If you remember, Brian, he's like a year behind us. Yeah. But Brian was like crying, laughing in one of our classes. Like, he goes, this is effing incredible. Like, you've got to let me take this and show this to somebody next year. And oh, I'm like, no. knowing this is not a good idea, but I'm like, all right, Brian, just don't get, he's like, I won't get caught. He takes it into Miss Rosevere's <gasps> class, who uh -oh. Miss Rosevere was one of the teachers oh, no. I sadly had depicted. And so <laughs> all I know is that I get called to the carpet by Mr. Uh, was it Lipinski? I can't remember the point oh, yeah. Lipinski. Yep. I can't remember. Yep. I think it was Lipinski, the vice principal. And he's like, well, I'll have you know, this is disgusting and inappropriate. He goes, but we're, <laughs> we're taking this right to Bob Jones. I'm going to let him deal with oh, you. And I'm no. like, that was even worse. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I go into Bob's office, and this is when he's the AD now, right? This is his first year yeah. as the athletic director. So you know that little office he yep. had off of the Performing Arts Center. Yep. And I'm in there, and Brame's in there too, Coach Brame. And so I've got Brame and Jones looking at me. And like Jones is just like, you know, when he gets really pissed and his head turns like eight shades of red and purple. Cause <laughs> you know, like we used to like always call him the pumpkin and the commission, all those things. And, <laughs> the yeah. So yeah. It's turning, and I could tell he's just pissed and like brain is just giving me the stink eye too. And then oh, Bob's oh. like, he has to take a call. He's pissed. He's like, I'm telling you, this is absolutely classless. Like, when are you going to learn? When are you going to grow up? And he has to go answer this call. And brain looks at me, goes, by the way, he thinks this is effing hilarious. Goes, this is your best work. <laughs> and then Bob hangs up the phone. And he's like, but I tell you what they God dang it. Ethan have like just immediately on the dime switches and starts chewing me out just so that he didn't get in trouble with Bob. Like Bob's oh, like, awesome. yeah, yeah. Classless. Yeah. And then as soon as Bob walks in, he's like, I'm telling you the top notch. Top, I'm going to keep this. And I'm just like, frame you. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And what, yeah. Does he still have that? I, I, I'm brain might still have it. I never got it back. I was in so much trouble. Oh, that's so I think funny, the only man. time Bob was madder was when I mouthed off about Brock Cure, which we covered before. Oh and God. Yeah. I was running stadium stairs for like every morning for two weeks. <laughs> Brock Cure. Yeah. In first period. That was like, Ugh. Oh, oh she boy. Is over. Yeah. yeah no, so no I think everybody that graduated with you has like a full page drawing of, <laughs> of whatever you drew you know, you drew, you draw like a, uh, I don't know, like a caricature of I don't, either themselves doing something crazy, or I think mine has like, you know, Dan Marino or something like that, <laughs> like doing something with a football, like standing on some guy's head or something like that. Uh, yeah, th I, I remember you just sitting there drawing all these things because, you know, everyone would go, have a great summer, you know, hey, uh, nice meeting you, hey, blah, 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 you know, have fun, blah, blah, blah you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah. but you just draw this like giant, like crazy, like mural, like on there, uh, uh, yeah. In the, in the yearbook. So yeah, it was awesome. Cause you were, you were legit, like a really good artist. Now, did you ever now you getting back to the tattoo thing now, did you draw like how many tattoos did you actually draw for people? Cause I know oh, that people geez. were coming to you and like actually having you design their tattoos. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that. You're like, I don't want, I can remember. I can't, I know Mo for, for, cause he got a gigantic one on his back and I just felt so bad for Mo because it looked great on paper, 
But when it was on his back, it did not look like it looked on paper. I don't think that's at the fault of the tattoo <laughs> artist. I mean, I just think it's like some art just doesn't translate well. Uh oh. The tattoos kind of a thing. Yeah. And most seemed happy. So I never said anything. But deep down, I was just like, oh, that's not what I was going for, you know, kind of a thing. And then I do like the skull of my Raider, which, you know, to be honest, this I don't know the last time I cared two squirts of piss about the Raiders. They've been so pathetic for so freaking long. So <laughs> kind of a silly thing, once again, to get things tattooed on just because how much we change and grow. But, you know. Right, right. Yeah, but the, the, the Raiders back then had like that whole mystique still with the Al Davis sure. and the, the evil. He was like the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Howie Long was my guy, as you recall, yeah, and like yeah. Bo Jackson. Mark. I mean, I kind of unfortunately just got at the tail end of when they were exciting and fun and then had to just like suffer through some of the worst godforsaken football on all of the earth. <laughs> They did go back yeah. to the Super Bowl, didn't they? Like in 2000. They did. And then we fell apart again and went right back to garbage. It was like 0203. <laughs> oh, because that was, was right. Chucky. Right. I left Central and right. moved to here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's 02, right. I think was the year against Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. So, um, now, uh, now do you, are, are, do you still draw? Are you still drawing those? No, you don't draw. No, every now and then like, I'll scribble something on the board when I'm teaching whatever, like, uh, I was trying to tell Riker the other day. It was kind of funny. Cause we saw some teenage mutant Ninja turtle thing. And I don't know if you recall this, Josh, but like in eighth grade, I was like selling drawings of the teenage mutant Ninja turtles at lunch and getting no tons way. of money. That's crazy. <laughs> Cause I could draw the ones like they looked like on the cartoon or in the wow. comic book and they were easy. That's you know? awesome. And so, yeah, I just whipped these things out. And so I remember we had this teacher, Miss Allen, who was like a social studies teacher. She was really sweet. And literally if I just sat there and drew things and like hung up like stuff for her class, like native American art or whatever, uh, that she'd give me to draw or whatever. I, I don't think I turned into an assignment all year and I got an A out of that class. Like, I don't awesome. know how good of a teacher she was, but she was a sweet lady. Uh, but <laughs> that is awesome. That yeah. is awesome. So my, my art got me in trouble. It also got me into things, but no, I, I wish I would have pursued it more. Sometimes I wish I would have pursued maybe being an art teacher or something. Yeah. I can see you nature, as a but... Miss, Mr. Teller. Oh, Mr. Teller. What a legend he was. <laughs> what would happen to some of these, these legends? Well, the last time I saw Mr. Teller was uh, he was stoned out of his mind coming out of a Dave Matthews concert what? when I was working security at, no at the way. Gorge. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. It was him and Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray was my eighth grade basketball coach or something, ninth grade basketball coach, I think. And I'm like, those two coming out together, like tie-dye shirts, and just like I could tell they were Did they, they notice you or did you mind. notice them? I noticed them. They're hard to miss. I don't yeah. know that they fully recognized a college Ethan, right? You know, that was playing D tackle and probably was, you know, thirty pounds overweight. It's probably, and- <laughs> yeah. It's probably easier for students to recognize teachers than teachers yeah. to recognize the thousands of students over the years. Yeah, totally yeah. true. Because <laughs> as we mature, Josh, think about like how different people look just from like oh, yeah. seventeen to twenty-one. Like especially kids put on a little more weight. They get you know gross and facial. Like sure. kids come up to me all the time and go like McD, and I'm like. And you are like, I'm, I go, kiddo, you're going to have to, sorry if I'm offending you, but I've been, you know, I always say I get hit in the head a lot. Yeah. I don't remember everything. Tell right. me who you are. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wild, man. I couldn't be, I, you know, I know that some teachers don't, they just full on say, Hey, look, I don't remember names or whatever. I, I don't, re- I hardly remember some of my friends. Like I had this, um, I had this girl that I've met numerous times and I'm Facebook friends with her. And she's come up to me a couple times in like a bar and she's like, Hey Josh. And I'm like, Hey, How are you? I'm like, I, uh, she goes, you said that to me last time. And I go, Oh my God, there was a last time I did this too. That's horrible. Like, so yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah. So I, I yeah, think I'd make it. I can relate buddy. Pretty <laughs> <That's> easy. <laughs> now, Ethan, speaking of drawing on things, uh, there were these, uh, this is right. I think was this right when I was, uh, doing, my internship at, at KISW and they had these giveaways, you know, they're doing promotions. They have all these giveaways that you do. And one of the most popular things that we would ever give out were these little keychains, and they unsnapped and they had a little condom on the inside. Now on the other side of it had a little logo that said KISW and man, you want to talk about people going crazy for free stuff. That was one. I can imagine. That was one of them. But, um, (laughs) so this is, uh, is a interesting story. Uh, I think that someone had maybe opened the, you know, they, people used to always open them up and blow them, blow them up and stuff. You know, it's like, you know, look, you're not going to be using that con. I mean, 
If you're brave enough to use a condom from a radio station, I mean, all right, well, hey. (laughs) Okay, then you want some- Out of your seven children. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, so anyway, uh, mine had been empty. And I think, I don't know, I don't think I saw it until later, but you had opened it. And you had- and you had you had written on the inside of it. This is like a, this is a great episode for your for your kids for your kids to listen to. Um, so you'd written on the inside of it. Uh, Jesus was a cross dresser, and I know this was the timing of this because my grandma was in town for I think it was like my, my brother and my my brother and myself. We were graduating at the same time. So he was graduating high school. I was graduating college. So we were gonna have you know like a big party of you know family relatives and stuff like that. And <laughs> and my, my, this is my mom's dad. And so my mom's, um, my, my dad's relationship is kind of like, uh, with his family is kind of very broken. Um, you know, they're, she was very conservative, evangelical Christian type. Um, you know, and, uh, my key was, my keys were sitting on the counter <laughs> And uh, I could I could see uh, I was walking back uh, from the from the TV room to the kitchen, and she's she slides the keys over and she she turns it over and she looks at it and she goes whose keys are these? And I was like I, I see that those are my keys, but what is she talking like? Why would she ask whose keys are those? And then I see I see <laughs> oh. I see that she, and she looks at me, dude. I was like uh oh. I go those are mine, and she goes. She goes, what's this? I was like, uh, this is uncomfortable. Um, I, <laughs> I have really bad friends. I, <laughs> Ethan, Did I was grandma like, realize that's I was not like, me? That's I just remember, my... I just remember the last, I go, I'm like, okay, the last person I was hanging out with was Ethan. It had to be an Ethan. It looks like Ethan's writing. I was like, oh, I think that was like my buddy. Uh, he's joking. You know, it's just a joke. She goes, I don't think that's very funny. I was like, uh, okay. Um, yeah, so... <clears throat> I don't think she was very happy about that, but you know, I, I don't think she, by the way, I don't even think she believed me that it wasn't me that did that. So, <laughs> so she probably oh, hated great. me. She probably hated me from that point on, but you oh, know, that's why you weren't in the will, she's, Josh. Yeah, she's, she's no longer with us <laughs> either. So, you know, whatever, but, um, you know, yeah. she, uh, Greta rest your soul. Uh, but I, I didn't do that. It was not me, Greta. It was not me. It was Ethan. It was, it was me and I'll probably go to hell for no. a lot of terrible things I did back then. <laughs> I'm trying to become a better person. I really am. No, it was all in good fun. <laughs> I know. I just, I, I got a big kick out of trying to write, say, or do something shocking that would make all of you guys laugh. And so uh, well, I made yeah. a jackass of myself. I put my foot in my mouth about 10,000 times. I've offended many people. I damn near got fired from several jobs for saying or doing something completely inappropriate. Uh, yeah. And then it's well, so funny how quick I am to judge some of the kids that do similar things in my classroom and my own son. I have no tolerance for it, even though it's like, yeah. I can hear the voice in the back of my head going, yep. you were 12 times the jackass yeah. that this kid was. Lay off of them. I really love that. I, I always go back to like that first time I, I saw you and your hoodlum uh, buddies, uh, who I love, by the way. Um, yeah. Like just mow, mowing down those those people in the hallways, like in junior high. I was like, who are these people? Who are these guys? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, speaking of, uh, uh, speaking of keys, uh, do you remember the time that we b- borrowed my dad's truck to float the river? Oh God, Josh, I, that <laughs> remind like to this day, I've just never seen you like more concerned. I was horrified. Like the, oh, so the fact that we floated the full river, I mean, and that's a float, bro. That's yeah. like a that's day commitment. Miles. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, we started up at flaming geyser if I'm not mistaken. Right. And we made I, it all the way yeah, down. We were close to the footbridge. Yeah, we were. I think that was one of the times where we actually did one of those full floats. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you yeah. didn't know where in the hell your keys, well, like at what point your dad's truck's keys that we had used to get the, the tubes and everything up there. And so if I recall, you and I started just trudging in backwards, like, and then you just the sheer panic. Oh, I just no, because, had never seen you what that happened, panic before. Yeah. Because what happened was like, I think I had, we would always bring like a raft. Because uh, we we'd always have some sort of flotation v- device, but like uh, we'd always have like a tube, right? Yeah. But then, but then I think I had like a one of those you know yellow rafts, and I, I was like, all right, I'll just throw these in here; they'll be safe because you know I'm not gonna be in it. I usually would swim swim by it, like right. I, I I would always have my mask. I was always in the water. 
I was, you were searching for treasures. Yep. yep. So, so that was my <laughs> hobby. I, I was a very good swimmer. I was all about being in the water with my mask and, you know, I would just go up and kind of like hold on to the, to the raft. So I, I basically, I probably just threw those keys in there, but yeah. you know, rafting, uh, things, you know, get flipped well, and people are, you know, you're out with guys like Ethan and, you know, the, those kind of guys and people are, you know, playing. Well, wasn't Melissa or somebody with this too? I, there's, there's a group of us, I, I, but I, I, yeah. I don't think that everyone went back with us. It was just, I no, think <laughs> you and I and Melissa or whatever girl was with us. And I yeah. thought it was Melissa that was coming to visit you at the time, Yeah, but it might've been somebody else. Oh God. I, we were the only three of, as I recall, that were trudging and searching. And oh. I just, like I said, I just had never seen you so concerned. Oh. So I thought like, well, I've got to help. Yeah, because my dad, like, you know, he, you know, Marine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he, Your dad, he, me, he lost his temper, I bet he'd be scared. I've never seen Lee angry, oh. but I would respect and, and be afraid of Lee myself. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, yeah, and I had lost the, and that, that was a big thing of keys. It literally had all his keys on it. So oh, it was like a, it wasn't like you know just two keys. It was like a big thing of look like a janitor's keys, and I don't think I've ever told him this. By the way, <laughs> well, but, if, if hopefully he doesn't listen to this, yeah. I can't imagine he will. <laughs> so, Got so better any, things to do at this time. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So so yeah, we go back and we, oh no, we find out when we basically I'm like grabbing yeah, my, grabbing my stuff. We lost yeah, them, right. And I go, um, my dad's keys are gone. And you're like, what are you, what are you talking about? They're gone. And I go, they're gone. They are gone. And that's, that's when the panic sets in. Yeah. I, I was so freaked out. I go, I don't even know. To, like, how do we search a river? How do we search a, a giant river, uh, several miles long? And like that river is, you know, it's not crystal clear. It's like, you no. know, it's, it's the green river. I mean, you know, Gary Ridgway used to dump bodies in there back in the day. I mean, you know, downstream, but still he used to dump bodies in there. You know, yeah. That, uh, so yeah, it was, that was terrifying, man. But I, you are the one that found the keys. We were going back. And if I'm not mistaken, we had trudged back well over a mile fighting the current. <sighs> I got to remember we were going and it was, it felt like this might be just now my memory, just trying to make the story better, but <laughs> it seemed like it was getting pretty damn near to dusk. Cause we had spent all day out there. Like it wasn't <sighs> quite there. And I just see something. I reached down. I just remember grabbing and lifting up. And you go, you should go play the lotto. Like, I swear to God, yeah. I probably have better odds of being hit by lightning yeah. than finding those keys. And we found them. And it was glorious. I Maybe know one the, of my greatest achievements in life. It is. that I, I fully agree. Because I, I think that you said you saw something shiny. And you just went down. You're like, I'll just take a shot. And you like went down and grabbed it. And you're like, you got to be shitting me. Look at this. And you hold up the keys. And I'm like, oh, my God. I, I wanted to like... I don't even know. I just wanted to like bow down to you and like, oh, I couldn't believe it. I, oh, that was just one of the it greatest. Incredible. I think you bought me seven layers of fun, not, <laughs> not shortly after that. Some of the magic of Taco Bell you introduced me to, Josh. So I considered the debt repaid right there yeah, as soon as awesome. I had seven layers of fun. <laughs> seven layer burrito, man. Classic. Oh, God. That was so funny, man. Oh, God. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you again for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was wild. And dad, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, but you know what? No harm was done in the end. So maybe a little rust, maybe a little rust, but you know, Yeah, I don't know. No harm. No yep. foul. Yep. So now Ethan, back during the same period of time, uh, you know, I don't know. We've been doing this. Uh, we've been doing kind of like this phone thing uh, for some time. It actually, you know, well, you know, me talking to you, uh, recording you on over the air. Uh, I think it dates back to like 1998, 1999, when you called our radio show. Remember uh, when <laughs> Kevin yes. and I were doing the radio show? Uh, oh, yes. You and Kev. And, and uh, you know, I always have these ideas of, you know, Kevin really never cared. Chuck really never cared. They were never into this kind of thing. But I would always want to have like, hey, let's do like a, a summer song special or let's do like a, a special of, uh, you know, Valentine's Day songs or, you know, let's do, uh, I don't know, songs about yeah. the devil. <laughs> Some so, thematic programming it totally yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, so now I think Kevin, uh, he goes, he goes, yeah, like that sounds cool. I mean, there's a lot of songs about, you know, devil and, and Satan. <laughs> and here we are at the college radio station. No, but, uh, but so I had an idea. I was like, I think, uh, uh, Ethan would always do the impersonation of, uh, you know, the Adam Sandler, the goat. And, yeah. and you just called in, you're like, <laughs> I'll be Bob, the devil goat. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you're, it's essentially just the, the goat, like the, the yeah, Adam Sandler goat. me doing Adam Sandler's yeah. goat, yep. <laughs> but that was fun. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I can, uh, 
You know, it's funny. I do. I think I, I think I have that somewhere. You know what? Uh, throw that bad boy on YouTube. I know. I want it up there with uh, some of the other fun things you sent me that just pissed me off royally when I. That will remain. You can edit that part out. But I couldn't believe those velocities. Like, are you shitting me? <laughs> so, oh, can you hear this? Yeah. Okay, check this out, Ethan. Ninety-one point okay. five FM KCAT. My name's Kevin, and I'm Howie. And uh, it is uh, eight thirty. We got about a half it hour is left. It's eight thirty. And he finally stopped by. Who is this on the phone? Please, <laughs> please tell us who you who are. are you? Ah, uh, this is the devil goat. You know, <laughs> I've, I've come from hell because it's not fair that you talk to God all the time and you do not talk to anybody from down below. You know, so you know the devil has sent me six, 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 and all of that. You know, here I am. <laughs> yeah. So <Lord>. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that was a little bit of a uh, Bob the Devil Goat uh, back in the yeah. day. Yeah, there. It's funny that I, I I can actually play things while I'm talking to people now. I didn't realize I could do that before. Um, you know, before I mastered this whole thing here. No, but uh, you know what's funny is right after uh, you know right after we graduated, we were like, I'd go over to your place and we'd listen to a lot of music, and we talked about that before. But um, you know what album always always sticks out for me, and probably because it's totally immature. The lyrics are just so asinine and ridiculous. Oh, but I can guess, Josh. Which, which one is it? My guess would be the Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> one fierce beer coaster. <laughs> yep. You still go to raves. You think Christ saves. You spend your days in a purple haze. You contemplate what a grape nut is. Or could you live dick in your own whiz? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I still I got, remember that crap. I got Ryan into that song, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> when we went over to Central. But yeah, I'm like, oh, everybody always picking on me. I was like reading the reviews of that. Oh, they are not good with the reviews. No. And nor should they have been. That was no, pretty it's a joke terrible. album. It's a joke. And, you know, it's very yeah. offensive. Like they're making fun of a lot of stuff. But but for a young Ethan and Josh back in 1996 yeah. or wherever it was, yeah. gold. Well, for boys that are basically 18 to 24 that are completely genetically retarded, of yes. course, that's hilarious. Pure that's... gold. The drummer from Deliberate's only got one arm. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, oh, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Life but short and yeah. hard, like a bodybuilding yeah. elf to save the planet and kill yourself. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So now, speaking of music, Ethan. Speaking of music, I actually uh, ended up uh, DJing your your wedding after yes, college. You were money, buddy. Well, I mean, I, th- those things always stress stress me out so much. Well, doing it those stressed weddings. me out too. And then here's the worst part: is then I felt like this still eats at me, Josh, because. And what you were closer of a friend to me than some of the people that were like my people that I had in the wedding, but then some of those guys I just went so far. Like, I just still you feel had bad. So many like, people, you and Frank, that was like a nine freaking wedding guy. Like, yeah. the thing was just, I, just, I felt blessed because I've, you know, honestly, like I said, friends were like family to me. Like, right, right. I love my family, but like, kind of like your dad, it was not always an easy relationship. And so, honestly, my friends were my family, and just I couldn't put everybody up there. I was lucky. No, so I get a that. Thousand sister. I don't take but, offense, so don't worry about it. No, yeah, well, I think it, me. I it think it makes. Me. I think it makes pure sense to to like have me do the wedding, like as far as like the music and stuff like that. Because at least you were unreal. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, it was funny that which sticks out. By the way, um, how long have you have you and Sarah now been married? Is it twenty years? It will be twenty. Yes, it'll be twenty years. Uh, August third. That is Isn't insane, that incredible, bro. That is crazy. That's incredible. Wow. You, you the know fact that I've convinced her when she's so far out of my league for 20 years to stick around. I don't know what my trick is, but thank God it's <laughs> You're working. Like, she bought it. She bought it. No, <laughs> no. How did that, wait, by the way, real quick, how did that go? Like, how did you, did you do the complete traditional thing where did you go to her dad and ask? Uh, oh yeah. Well, that was, I mean, the whole thing was so crazy. Cause like we said before, so I was, there was that football guy that we were common friends with. And everybody thought Mark and Sarah were going to get married. Yeah. And so, I mean, I got to know Sarah a little bit because obviously we have our mutual friend, Dan Marsh, and his younger sister, Suzanne, sure. who we're friends with as well. Uh, you know, Suzanne came up to Central, transferred from Clark Community College, and was on the track team with Sarah. And I just thought, uh, like, you know, we know that there's challenges that, that Suzanne had gone through and stuff. And I just knew that uh sarah the fact that she was such good friends with her i was like man this girl's not just pretty man she's different well then Mm -hmm. suzanne was great at kind of like basically lying to both of us to get me the courage to talk to sarah (laughs) and to think that made me think that sarah is actually interested in me once mark broke up and i think mark just freaked out where like his brother had gotten married and i think he started to realize it was time to kind of get serious about the relationship but they had enough history yeah that that were there was concerns maybe whatever and he kind of just he freaked out. So I just used the old football metaphor. If he fumbled and I scooped and scored, baby, I just I picked up that ball and ran. Yep. And so, yeah. So once 
we dated what's crazy, Josh, and you kind of know this whole setting a little bit, but I know by this point, you being back home, mm-hmm. like we, gosh, I think I kissed her on December 1st of 2000. So we like, we were literally together six months when I proposed. Wow. And then we were married eight, eight months from the first time we kissed. Like what it, is things this, 1955? So <laughs> well, that's the thing. And like, and you know me, like prior to that, man, I had problems <clears throat> holding any kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was just, I mean, not that I was a womanizer. I was not by any means, but right. I was just damaged goods, man. I just felt like, I don't know. She was the first person that ever made me believe that I like, I wanted, like, I felt like I'd gotten lucky to even have this girl consider to date me. Like I didn't want to mess it up. So yeah, when we go back and this is like months after, I don't even months, like it was weeks after I kissed her for the first time, she goes, you should come to Sunnyside and meet my family and get to know stuff. And I, not little did I know this is the way she kind of tested anyway. Like, is this guy a really got a shot. I need to bring him home and kind of put him yep. to the gambit of her family. Because as you know, Sarah's a huge family. I mean, triplet, yeah. identical triplet brothers, an older brother, Wait, an what? Older sister. I didn't know that part. Wait, whoa, yeah. slow down. She has what? She has-, she has identical triplet brothers, but she has an older brother, Brant, that's even older than that. And then an older sister, Sarah's the baby. That's crazy. She's got five siblings. Wow. And so all of which were married at that point, all of which had children. I go to her house on a Christmas thing where they all still came together, like something out of leave it to beaver or like a Hallmark movie where they all come home. I see the pictures. It still looks like leave it to beaver. Yeah, <laughs> It's crazy. Well, they're all just such good looking yeah. people too. Like all my nieces and nephews and just like, yeah. So it's just Central crazy. Casting. Yep. So I'm like, first off, I can't even tell the three triplets apart. And then to make matters worse, some of my sister-in-laws are like patting the wrong one on the butt and stuff. I'm like, well, that's a little easier than like, if they can't get it right, yeah. the pressure's off of me. Um, <laughs> But it was like overwhelming and amazing. And there was this thing of just like, okay, I get now why she's so different than every other super pretty girl that maybe we met in college. Like she is just legitimately like a good person that was raised in this amazing family. And I was like, I'm like, wow. And so Gary and Aline, her parents take me out to eat um, like about the first day I'm there. And I just figured like, okay, I'm just going to be honest with these people because if they find out things little by little, they they took you out by yourself. With Sarah too. Oh, okay, okay. So there's a little place called Snipes Mountain. It's a little brewery in Sunnyside. Uh, and there's not much in Sunnyside. But we go to the thing, and I just go like, after a few basic getting to know me questions, I don't know what happens. I just decide to tell them every horrible thing about me, every horrible thing I've been through, every oh. terrible decision I've made. It sounds like an and episode just, of uh, uh, The Bachelor, where like they, oh. they just pour out their... <laughs> Yeah, like when they go home and kind of like with the, the home visits. <laughs> yeah. well, I was kind of doing that. I'm just like, and Sarah at that point, I didn't think she was that in, you know, she was in the early stages. And I thought, well, this guy's interesting, or whatever. But I just told Gary and Eileen everything because I just wanted them to know, like, if this is going to be a problem yeah. and if you don't like want me to date your daughter, I'd better off knowing now so I don't get my hopes up right. <laughs> and get crushed later. But you're still, and, you're still always, you've always had the ability to be charming about telling stories no matter what it's about i mean that's that's what makes you uh, i don't know i mean i guess that's what makes you so popular you know as far as sweet of you to say josh i know mo used to get pissed because i could turn it off and on he said like i could be such an a-hole but then turn around and sweet talk the secretary and mo was just an asshole 24 7 he didn't know how to turn it off and on and he got mad at me (laughs) first as you probably remember mo can be an asshole yeah but yeah uh yeah so that's i Kind of like that was kind of set the stage, but later six months, I proposed to her at night. Uh, uh, my God, Niagara Falls, not a chance. I've watched too much <laughs> of The Office at Snoqualmie Falls. Oh, and, nice. Uh, that's, that's awesome. That's like a, yeah. that's a perfect place. Well, we'd had this big breakup too, like a month prior where Sarah was really upset with me and just kind of like, uh, and at this point I hadn't done anything, but I think just more like, once again, things are getting serious. Yeah. Uh, she was kind of like. Just like, I don't want to do this. And like her brother and uh, my brother-in-law now, but one of the triplets, Garth, would call me every day to tell me exactly what to do to get Sarah to come. You to had a senses. lot of people like working in your, on your, ca- in your camp there. So huh? many. <laughs> well, like at the time, even get the first day I kiss uh, Sarah. Yeah. I actually had a girlfriend at the time and this sounds terrible. No, it, that, that happens met. all the time. It's not that terrible. Yeah. It happens all I, the time. I had, yeah. I had this girlfriend, Tracy on the cross country team and she was really sweet, really cute. Uh, and I thought maybe something serious. And I was like, when Suzanne kind of said, like Sarah said, the only person she's interested in maybe going on a date with is you. I called my mom out of like panic. Like, what do I do, mom? 
Uh, she was on vacation in Hawaii of all things. And the best advice, I think you've heard this story, but this yeah. is like the coolest thing where she says, well, uh, let's say Tracy's one side of a coin and Sarah's the other. You're going to flip this coin. I'm like, mom, really? We're going to decide. No, this are you shooting flip? me? She did not say no, that. She, she says, she goes, yes, we're going to, yo, just trust me. She goes, so tell me right now, honey, what, what side do you want to be what? And I said, okay. I go, are you serious about this? Mom? She goes, do it. So as I flip the coin and when I go, she goes, flip it really high. And I go, okay. She goes, run away from the coin. I'm like, what? She goes, don't even look at it. Run away. And I run away and I go, what the hell is that all about? She goes, when the coin was in the air, what were you hoping for? Oh, that's and I funny. Go, yeah, I go, Sarah. She goes, there's your answer, honey. She goes, but be a man and tell Tracy straight up. Don't do the, the thing you normally do where you just stop talking to a girl and then you see her at Albertson. She, she tells you to wow. F off and makes you blush. Like poor Angie Evers, if you remember that story. I got, that was embarrassing. But yeah, needless to say, I did that. I told Tracy the next day, which one of the worst things to do is yeah. to drive uh, from Ellensburg to Yakima, tell her in Yakima, and then realize oh, no. you have a 30 minute drive home. That's oh, the God. most awkward drive of your life. <laughs> at least she's not able to text at that point in time. Right? No. <laughs> and I wanted to be a man and tell her face to face and want to do it over the phone or any of that stuff. So yeah. So that was really awkward. But then she even admitted like she had uh, made out with one of the other guys. I thought, well, this is easy now, Tracy, screw you. Bye. Well, uh, so that was, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, that oh, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's how yeah. it went down. And then a couple, yeah, after no. that whole weird breakup, I went and asked Gary and did the old tradition thing and Who's the, her permission because I respect her dad. And, I have a quick question. Who's the girl that you, was it? I don't know if it was Tracy. I, who's the girl that was driving back from uh, the West side and oh, the um, car accident. Yes. At, that was Tracy. That was Tracy. That was true. That was after all okay. that had gone down. Okay, yeah, that was Tracy. Cause her I, friend turned up the wrong ramp. Okay. Cause the funny, I didn't, I didn't know about that part where you said that she had actually told you that she, well, she's like, well, you know what? I made out with one of the, no, I don't, I don't know how it went, but, um, yeah. but it's funny because I remember one time I was, you know, you guys used to have these, these house parties at your place. <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> I've never told you this, uh, but not that I didn't do anything with her. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, uh, I was, I was, you know how you could like, so you could, in that place, it was that, that one house uh, was kind of oh, like yeah. over by the, um, the Jack in a Box or whatever. So, yep. so it was that house where you could, you could walk around and walk down the, the, the lawn into the back, right? Around but the corner. downhill. Yes. So nobody even knew that we had a basement that was full of sweet stuff that Lee built. Yes. Yes. The kegerator. Like a bar, a kegerator. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. It was right. the best party house. Or you could walk, you could walk down, uh, down through the house into the, I don't know if like down the stairs Basement. or whatever. Right. Yeah. So, so I'm walking and, uh, I'm walking, um, up the lawn, uh, into the front and she's stumbling down the, the, the back and, and she's like, Hey Josh. And I go, Hey, and I'm like, and she goes, so yeah, I just wanted you to, I know that I've always had, I kind of like, and I'm like, all right, see you later. And I like, I literally just, I literally just walked up the, like the, the thing. And I'm like, I'm like looking, I'm like looking around, like Jesus Christ. I'm like, I don't want anybody to, I don't even want any witnesses of this. Cause like, I, didn't, I didn't do shit. I'm like, and so, uh, so I, I, it was funny. I, I don't even know if I ever told Lee that. Right. So like I, I, uh, the funny thing is when you got with Sarah and you got married to Sarah, I was like, I was literally like, I think you made the right freaking decision because yeah because that you know story stories like that say a lot you know it's it's funny because you know it's just and it, it's no really bag on, bag on her she probably just clearly wasn't ready to do her no. thing either so it's like you college know, kids man college yeah. kids are going to do a lot of strange things exactly so um now you remember that time when yeah. the party got out of control and I think you were there and I just said, if you're not from Auburn, get the F out of my house. Oh, God. <laughs> so I think we got like three noise violations in 10 minutes because oh. it got too out of control because Lee decided to text the or email the entire freaking campus about our party. Oh God. Yeah. Well, that, and it didn't last very long either. It was like, no. <laughs> like think, Lee, when I go to the basketball game and some girl that I've never met before in my life, that's one of Sarah good or Sarah's good friends says, we're going to this, to this party at this guy named Lee's house. I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> I'm like, how, how does she know? Lee? She goes, she goes, do you know, Sarah goes, do you know Lee? And she's like, nah, man, but it's like, it's been going through the email. And I'm like, I could be mistaken. So I could be mistaken, but I swear to God, Lee had even posted like flyers or something like I that. Don't doubt it. No, uh, but, I mean, he just got excited. He had built that bar. He had the keg. I mean, it was legit. And I think he was just proud. No, to show and off. I came over, I set up like music, music, like in the, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, like black it was lights great and stuff. for the whole 20 minutes. Yeah. It lasted. 
we had recruits that weekend and we had a bunch. And so like, I mean, that was a nice thing is all the noise violations got done away with by my football coaches because yeah. they, once they realized it was the recruit party, old coach Strand says, Hey, what, what are the make cups? So there's a old DN of mine. I'll take care of this. <laughs> and literally they all went away. I don't think we had to pay a cent as I recall, but, uh, but at the time I was like, so worried about like, I don't want to get like five noise violations. Wow. Uh, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that you don't Lee Lee in college was awesome. <laughs> Lee in college is just Lee period. Lee is just one of the most True. amazing human beings to know yes, yes. and to have as a friend. Cause he makes life so much more interesting. Oh, hands down. I agreed, man. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, you know, going back to your wedding, um, do you no, know, I don't remember everything that happened at your, your wedding. Well, I don't blame you. Do How you, many weddings have you DJ Josh? Uh, quite I have a few. A feeling you've done quite a few, quite a few. Uh, but I, I had to stop cause I was like, this is making me crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm stressed, so, man. Yes. Cause I'm like, are you, when you're doing those, okay. Especially back then I was hauling around CDs. So, you know, I oh, didn't, you didn't have God. the computer cases. system, right? Just cases yeah. and cases of CDs. So if like someone had like a request, I literally had to have like, you know, pin through a CD and, and, you know, whatever. But anyway, and then you have like the, the, you know, the, um, the bride's father is the one that's, you know, he pays the money. So he right. is like watching it like a hawk. And then, you know, everyone gives you the request and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, well, I know that you want to hear like this, you know, chick flick or this, you know, you want to hear like John Mayer or something like that right now. But, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really, you know, go with the whole party here. Uh, I mean, I could throw it in somewhere maybe later or something. But yeah, no, it was stressful just trying to cost and, and everyone's drunk. And so like, you're just trying to, okay, okay. But um I do remember uh, your first dance, uh, or the first dance, or the dance, the bride and the groom dance. Um, you guys did the song uh, "Nothing Else Matters," right? With my mom, I danced oh, with a, my mom. That's right. That's nothing right. else matters. Oh yeah. yes, Sarah yes. and I's song was "When You Say Nothing at All." I think by Allison Cross. Oh, or something Allison like Cross. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I remember. <laughs> okay, now this makes now it makes more sense because I remember your your mom uh, was up there dancing. You were dancing with your mom and. Uh, <laughs> This makes so much more sense now because I thought it was uh, uh, Sarah and I was like, I don't see Sarah doing this. But uh, but I, I think that um, your your mom, because you, I don't think your mom realized that that song was like a six minute something song or whatever. It was it's a, long. Yeah, it's a very long song. So your, your mom like turns back and she's like, kind of like, give me the cut it and it cut it. And then you're like, <laughs> and you kind of like turn around. You're like you when you when you turn back to the other side, and you're like, hey, man, cut this, cut it. Because like, you know, I was like, oh, time to fade out because like. You know, it's a really long, it's a great song, it is. but it's like super, super long. So, um, but well, I my mom loved Metallica. I brainwashed her into liking Metallica over the years of just being an adolescent punk. But yeah, Talk she, uh, I didn't think that through either. I should have thought that one through a little bit more, especially for my mom with bad knees. That what? was just like, yeah, it was really mean. She was, was kind of like torturing. Was, my did you say mama. it was mean? <laughs> <laughs> nah. oh, how, how's, uh, how's, uh, how's Karen doing these days? Karen is, she's doing all right, man. She's hanging in there. She's hanging yeah. in there. My family makes it interesting on her. God bless them. But uh, she's, she's hanging there. She talk about the glue. Yeah. I worry what will happen. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm Karen's definitely the, she's always been the glue. Yeah, yeah. she has. Yep. Yep. Um, now one thing that did happen, did, did, was your wedding recorded? Like, did somebody record this? Yeah, wedding? we have it on like VHS somewhere, and somehow I got to figure out how to digitize that if yeah, it's already dead. You should actually. Do you remember the thunderclap that damn near like shook the entire? Like, I thought God was coming for me in His so, house of worship. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. I, I, I was going to say now. I remember some of the actual receptions from some of the weddings, but I, yeah, I don't remember ninety five percent of any actual wedding ceremony. I mean, they're so boring and just terrible. Yes. Yeah. But your wedding now, <laughs> just to paint a picture, you now you said you had like uh, your, you know, the, the line of all the, the groomsmen, right? Oh my gosh. And, yes. Like and it was nine of them. It felt like, but it was hilarious too, because you have the contrast of the two of the groomsmen and the bridesmaids <laughs> and the groomsmen, <laughs> two they, different worlds, man. They, they all look like they just freshly got released out of prison and they're on parole to attend this <laughs> wedding. And <laughs> yeah, we got Robbie, we've got Mo, we've got and, Danny Marsh. Who's yeah. like Corvette blew up on the way over. We guys, he's pissed in the world. He got yes. Jeremy and Woody and, and, and oh, half the guys gosh, too, because great. remember, uh, and, it, and it really does look like it because, you know, half these guys have like the buzz cuts going on. So they look yeah. like they just, you know, 
they just got released, right? So Cats, buzz cuts. Yeah. <laughs> And then you got all my little sweet little Christian sister-in-laws that are, you know, all prim and proper. And right. Some of them are carrying their babies in their arms that are like two years old or a year old or whatever. It's just like, right. yeah, it was a and I think that, co- I worlds think that, collide. Yes. I think that you actually made the joke that it was like good and evil coming together. So <laughs> that's what made that moment so insane. I don't know if it was during your vows or if they're about to say the vows or, or whatever, but that giant storm outside, like it uh, shook the entire building and everyone's kind of like looking at each other like, um, uh, w- w- what's going on here? W- w- what is this? Well, it's so funny because when we were in Ben, Josh, we literally ran into uh, two friends of Sarah and I that we went to co- or school with, played football with my buddy Josh. And then uh, his girlfriend was also at Central, his wife now, excuse me. And uh, Nicole was at our wedding because Josh and I, you know, were playing ball and stuff. And Nicole, that's the first thing she goes, do you remember that, that freaking thunderclap or that light, whatever the hell that was at your wedding? Yeah. She goes, I've still never seen anything like that. No, <laughs> no, I, I've, I've still, ne- that was insane. That was crazy. It was. And again, uh, like you said, it was kind of like, uh, you know, I mean, God was coming for me. Right. Like he was coming to the- <laughs> that like, was his shot. He took you it. Were, you were not going to well, do this. You were not going to do this girl. to this innocent young woman and yeah. all her friends and family. And how <laughs> dare you? We're going to stop to this. No, exactly. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, but you know, the, just sticking with the, uh, the music, I don't, you know, it's funny. Um, I think was was it my brother? Was he the one that was like helping me out on that? Yeah, I, I bet, and I loved Andy, man. Yeah. Andy's just good people, man. And we got into music back in the day. Andy loved yeah. all that metal with me. Right, right. So and he's probably just, uh, coaching him in football at high school and stuff too. And yeah, it's just fun. He's just a good guy. Yeah, he's like a, you know, it's funny is my I always tell people I go my brother was ten times the athlete that I I mean like just if you're talking like pure athletics, like he was, he was insanely good at like being, he was like a great athlete, but he blew his knee out (laughs) on a trampoline. And then he just slowly just became a stoner, which, uh, you know, I'm sure he's fine with, but, uh, but yeah, he was nuts. Like he was way, way more athletic than I was. I mean, I was, I was okay. I, I definitely worked at being, you know, an average, you know, uh, well, yeah, like we covered before, you know, unfortunately just, a little late in blooming compared to like a freak like me who was done growing in seventh grade or something like that. But cause man, I mean the, the, the things you could do, but like you said, hard work too. I mean, and that's all, but it's just, man, yeah, you were an athletic guy. It just came a little later. Yeah. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, but my, my brother was there, uh, and I, thank you by the way, but, I, <laughs> but my brother, yeah, he was there because I remember, uh, Kevin had gone down to, um, Sacramento he'd taken a job and we had we basically scheduled all these different weddings like over the you know like the like a summer and a half of all these different weddings and stuff like that so each week I'd have to like this week uh, this, uh we have the special guest Andy Matlock who's joining us and uh <laughs> the next week is uh Ryan Dunham so everybody give it up for Ryan hey look at hey look Lee Olson is making an appearance this week so yeah it's kind of funny would Ryan just... be helpful or distract I could see Ryan drinking lots of beer and distracting you not really being helpful uh no Ryan no because like I don't think we were drinking because remember we would um I think uh Ryan uh he like when Ryan works he like he he, he works. works yeah that's so, true yes Ryan is a workhorse because I was gonna pay him like you know like I don't know what it was like you know a quarter of whatever you know what just to right, basically yeah. sit there and kind of like help me out like make sure that you know he, someone could like watch over stuff and m- make sure that you know everything is not breaking down and stuff you know talk to people that I don't have to talk to when I'm sitting there like fumbling <laughs> through all these CDs and stuff like that you know yeah so yeah so uh yeah he was fine but um but anyway uh speaking of uh music uh we have i think we have like another music special uh coming up in the near future um Woo-hoo! that we uh we've kind of you know talked about and we also have the big project that's currently in the works for football season and yes. yeah so that should be uh that should be airing in the co- the next couple weeks or so so I'm kind of a uh, kind of excited for that, kind of stressed about that, but uh, you know it's it's coming along, and I think it should be uh, I think it should be uh, pretty awesome, man. It sounds fantastic. So I'm telling you, the labor of love you put in just to research that, making it ready and stuff, Josh. I mean, it's gonna be it's just gonna be great fun. I can't imagine a Seahawks fan. I mean, they may not agree with the order we put things in, and we care less. How are they not gonna just enjoy? kind of just revisiting those moments. I mean, yeah, it was so fun to go through that and just think about some of those things I haven't thought about in years, and just right. as a fan of the Hawks. 
And there's uh, some yeah, deep, kind of there's some deep cuts in there, man. There's some deep cuts. There is. There's some, there uh, is some deep cuts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So maybe I'll, uh, you know, announce that probably when it comes out, but, but yeah, dude. Uh, so we'll have to, uh, but Ethan, uh, yeah, I'm glad that we could uh, do this kind of like the second part of this, uh, you know, the, there's so much to talk about, you know? So, uh, well, I'd love the idea of getting Robbie on here at some time. I think Robbie Lee and I and just talk about oh life as roommates would be one fun. I don't know if anybody would yeah. like it besides the four of us. Oh, no, you hilarious. guys have amazing stories. And oh. I, I even have some stories that are in the back of my head, but I don't even want to like begin to even talk about some of these stories because those are like the stories that I've heard from you guys. And it's best to always hear it from, you know, the mouth of whoever told it. So, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. So Ethan, uh, I'm gonna have to get you back on here again, maybe with uh, you know Rob, or maybe even a, maybe even an appearance uh, by the great Dan Marsh. Do you think he'd ever? <laughs> oh my God, that'd be awesome! <laughs> I'm hopefully I'm trying to see him this summer. Really? Uh, there's the him and his wife are coming because they're like out in Missouri somewhere, right? And if I don't mean you remember Asia, she was like absolutely Dan's good friend. Yeah, yes, love Asia. So him and Asia are actually swinging back to visit Levina and stuff. I think. So they're going to be in Auburn for a little bit, and then they're going to see Mo in Spokane. Wow. And that's a short little drive for me to Spokane. It's actually closer than than going home is yeah. to Auburn. So I'm going to try to go over there in like early August uh, and catch them and just see Mo and his family, but see Dan and his family. Oh, and so if, awesome. if that happens, maybe I can plant that seed oh, and see definitely if uh, do Danny it. would be game. Definitely, definitely. That would be a blast. Yeah, Danny. Love Danny, man. Oh, Danny. That would be a classic. <laughs> That would be a classic episode. Talk about all the Tecmo attorneys and all that good Tecmo stuff. Tecmo attorneys, his cats. Mac. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I, dude, he even named his son Andre. I mean, that's how committed. Yeah, he's amazing. Oh, he's, he's just one of a kind, brother. <laughs> I love that guy. The possibilities so. are endless for these shows. Maybe even like oh, your old your old sidekick, Brent Kipling. Oh, Brent would be awesome too. Yep. 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 The Kipster he was just talking about today because, and you cannot edit this shit out, but he was just talking about like he just got his 25 year plaque at like for UPS. Yeah. And he said, you and him started on the exact yes. same day. Yep. In in training together yep. on the same day. It's like he was talking about, he said, Rob Hill was like there a little bit before you guys. You remember Rob Hill? Yep. Yep. That was a name I hadn't thought about in a long time. So Brent pulled that one out today. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Woody was like a couple days or a week, maybe, or maybe more like yeah, a month. Yeah, he was like, I think it was a few, I think it was like two or three weeks after. Yeah. Yeah. That's just crazy. Isn't man. that wild? Yeah. He, yeah. I, yep. I could, that's another whole story I could talk with Brent uh, about oh, because, man. because it's, it's actually a famous story. Um, but Punching yeah. The boxes and the- <laughs> well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I could get into that I mean, because it's basically, uh, it started long before that with the, uh, this, this, uh, supervisor that they had Shitty supervisor. Huh? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've had a couple of run-ins with supervisors who I just, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't see Brent ever being like a, a difficult supervisor. You know what I mean? Like, like that kind of supervisor. No. So I don't know. Is he still a supervisor? Is that what he does? Is oh it- yeah. He runs the entire overnight air through CTAC. <laughs> That's, so That's his thing. Like, talk wow. about a busy, but for him, it works out best as being a family man. Yeah. Cause they, they can't like, kind of encroach on his other hours as much as some of those other positions had. So right. he's in a good place right now with that. But yeah, that's awesome. He's running that whole overnight air through through SeaTac, which is crazy. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well yeah. All right, buddy. Well hey, make sure that you tell Angel Face I said hi. I will indeed, sir. And I still need to meet the legendary Riker. Uh, yeah, one of these Riker days. beef. We'll get the beef down to Arizona one, here sometime here soon. I'm days. hoping to get down there and see you. Definitely. You need to come down for spring training. Definitely like spring training. I don't know if you're into golf. That's kind of a, that, that event's like almost way too big. It's a massive event down here. Massive. It's so, it's so big, but, um, so much too many people, but, uh, but spring training is awesome because it's all spread out and everything. And, and uh, going, going down to Peoria, seeing some uh, seeing some Mariners and having some oh, beers yeah. with Ryan and Lee and all those guys. So, so yeah, absolutely, man. That would be awesome, man. Fantastic. Awesome, brother. Well, hey, uh, we'll talk to you coming up on the Seahawks special. Woo-hoo. And until then, thanks for coming on the cool. show. Talk thanks to you later, man. Thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah. Go Hawks. Go Hawks, man. Talk to you later, man. <laughs> all right, brother. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends podcast. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow the show. And check out some of the video clips posted on YouTube and Facebook. I'm Josh, and thank you for being a friend.